And at the heart of this case is whether Apple has a monopoly over apps that iPhone users buy because the only way to buy them is through Apple's own app store, right? But that's not exactly what was being argued in today's case at the Supreme Court. The question was really, can iPhone users, represented here by Pepper, sue Apple when Apple claims to be just a distributor, not the makers of the apps? And in antitrust law, the precedent says generally you can only sue the people you're buying directly from. Now, Apple does charge a 30% commission fee which app developers factor into their pricing but Apple argued that it's just an agent of the app developers like the post office and that it does not set the price two lower courts disagreed as to Apple's role so Apple said just by ordering your app through the app store that does not make consumers direct buyers of the apps and therefore consumers could only sue the developers not Apple so in today's arguments the liberal justices were much more active in questioning Apple Justice Sotomayor noted that the 30 percent commission Apple charges and the fact that you can only buy apps on the App Store makes it all a closed wheel with Apple as the spokes. Justice Kagan suggested that since there is only one step, that is you can only buy the apps through the Apple Store, then you are transacting with the monopolist itself. Now in the counter argument by the iPhone users, Pepper, Justice Gorsuch suggested that the precedent still applies, that iPhone users should really have the beef with the app developers and not with Apple itself, and that perhaps the developers might have a case against Apple and not the iPhone users. Of course, the developers would kind of be biting the hand that feeds them. Right, Carl? Ah, absolutely. Uh, perhaps one reason Apple's gone red today, Diana. Uh, thank you very much, Diana Olick. Uh, for more, let's bring in Columbia Business School law professor Tim Wu, author of The Curse of Bigness, and I trust in the new Gilded Age, joins us here at Post 9. Tim, welcome back. Good, Good to, see to see you. you. So your thoughts on, on what we learned today, at least so far? Uh, well, it looks like, uh, as predicted, the, the liberal justices are uh, taking the side of consumers. The conservatives uh, seem to be taking the side, side, of, side of Apple. And uh, I, I still think it's an important case, but I, I think it might go down on the, the lines that people are expecting. Yeah. What, what, what's your argument, if you were arguing? Oh, so I, I actually think that, uh, that Apple should lose this case. And not because I necessarily that they're a monopolist or anything, but because when you go to the app store, it's like going to a store, and the idea that consumers can't sue a store that monopolizes seems to me strange. It would, it would make you wonder, well, can you sue Walmart if they monopolize? Could you sue... I mean, you're clearly dealing with, with Apple when you go to the App Store. That's my, my feeling about it. Here's what I'm having a hard time wrapping my head sure. around. Looking at my phone, the majority of my apps on my iPhone are, are free. And the ones that I have paid money for, it's not like it's a lot of money. It's usually a couple bucks yeah. at the most. Why would I, as a consumer, have an issue with this? It does seem like it's more of a developer issue. Yeah. Well, I guess the idea is you're overall, over the years, you know, 10 years of buying things, you will have paid that 30% surcharge. And, you know, the antitrust law is trying to keep prices low, right? So, you know, maybe it's just a little thing, but you multiply that against tens or tens of millions of people doing uh, thousands of purchases. You know, a couple of dollars here and there adds up to really big money. It seems like the simple fix for Apple here is to uh, only market or make visible the apps that pay Apple for higher exposure. If you want to be on the App Store but nobody can find you, good luck. Maybe if people search, they'll find you. But if you want to appear, if you want to appear in the rankings, uh, they could, it seems like lots of companies pursue that tack when right. uh, Amazon does it with uh, companies that are in its third-party seller on their platform versus those that aren't. Is this really going to get fixed one way or the other? Doesn't Apple have the distribution power? even if they adjust according to uh, the ruling handed down here? I mean, there's one strange thing about this entire case, which is the idea that Apple is, Apple is the monopolist of this entire app store. I mean, there is this thing called Android that many people use. And so there's this other big lurking issue in this case, which hasn't fully been briefed. But this is really focused on this question of who can sue. It has a lot to do, frankly, with whether class action uh, plaintiff's attorneys get in on the action or whether it's only government. So that's really the underlying issue here. I know it's being reported as like what happens with Apple, but the real underlying question is, is you know, who gets to sue Apple, um, and and uh, is it the plaintiffs bar or is it government? Do you see um, other outside outside of Apple potential ramifications, um, separate from whether it's class or something else? You know, else? you know, I mean, yes. If, it depends. Whoever wins, if Apple wins this case, it suddenly becomes harder to sue a whole class of companies, who are. Kind of, you kind of transact with, but kind of not. Example. Uh, example. Let's say Amazon. So you, you buy stuff on Amazon. Let's say the theory is Amazon is a monopolist. Well, are you actually buying? When you buy on the third-party market, are you actually buying from Amazon, or are you buying 
from them directly. And it creates incentives for companies to structure their business so you're dealing with the other party, Uber for example. Are you dealing with a driver, are you dealing with Uber? It opens up all these questions, and if Apple wins, it makes life a lot easier for all those companies, just to put but it But if out Apple there. loses, what are the other companies to keep an eye on in terms of the precedent this would set? If Apple loses, as I said, all, uh, I, I, if Apple loses, I think life returns to normal. But if Apple wins, it's a big victory for everyone who can point to someone else and say, oh, you're really doing business with them, like Uber, for example, yeah. Lyft, Airbnb, so on.